Hey friends, so I haven't posted a video in a while. I feel like, do I say that a lot in front of my, before I start my videos, that I haven't posted a video in a while? Haven't done much lately. You know, I shipped my book and since then, well, so today or like earlier in the day, so my sense of time is completely whack, but uh, well now it's 4 a.m. So at 7 a.m., so 21 hours ago, almost yesterday, I guess. I did a salon, an inter-intellect salon with my friends uh, Tiago Forte and Dan Shipper and it went really well, I'm really happy about that. Uh, I did not know that you can actually have a Zoom call with like hundreds of people in it that are like attending if you're doing like a panel sort of thing. So we had four of us or three of us on screen but there were like hundreds of people watching it which is wild. And uh, yeah, you know we had a very good conversation, I enjoyed it and there's stuff I want to follow up on. But uh, what I wanted to say, I guess, is that I have not been smoking. And I don't know if I've talked much about cigarettes on my YouTube channel. I've written about it a lot. So I used to, I used to journal and blog about smoking. I used to tweet about it as well. Uh, so I guess i just tell the story of me and cigarettes. Uh, and right now, as I make this video, this is my second or third day not smoking. So I haven't smoked in about 50 hours-ish. And I feel pretty good, and uh, but let, you know I'm skipping ahead. So my dad smoked all my life. He still smokes, uh, pretty heavily. He smokes. He goes through a lot of cigarettes, but uh, he doesn't. He doesn't like inhale them very intensely. He sort of just keeps lighting them up and keeps having them <laughs> around, which is an interesting way of smoking. And uh, I don't think anybody else in my family. Oh, my elder. Br I have one elder brother who also smokes, and. Um, but almost nobody else in my family smokes. And when I was a kid, I thought smoking was gross and I thought I would never smoke. Right, because my dad smoked, why would I want to do what my dad does? And uh, when I was about 17, 16, when I was 16, 17, I started playing in a band. I started hanging out with musicians. And musicians do smoke a lot, you know, in my experience. And, you know, if you check it out, I'm sure there's... There is a relationship between cigarette smoking and neuro certain like neurotypes and I, I bet like uh, there are certain kind of office job accountants or whatever who smoke the least right where a certain kind of high pressure look at her she's staring at me you want to be in my video there's certain kind of high pressure um, jobs not necessarily high pressure jobs but certain volatile styles of people who just smoke a lot right and uh, people with I know people with schizophrenia smoke a lot and people with uh, ADHD, people, so one of the things I'm getting to is that people with ADHD are likelier to smoke and they, are, they smoke more and they get more withdrawal symptoms when they smoke, when they stop smoking. And yeah, you know, so cigarettes are a stimulant, right? Nicotine is a stimulant and it, you, you, you know what I mean? Like ADHD meds then the, are also stimulants, right? Like, uh, it's basically microdosing meth, right? Ritalin and Adderall and whatever. Like, I, I don't know what specific things are. I've never taken any of those. But I have been, you know, I started smoking with my teenage musician friends. And I started smoking when I was like 17. I would just bum a cigarette from a friend now and then when we met. And then, you know, it's like I would be playing, we would rehearse. And then both of my bandmates smoked. There was three of us and they would go out to smoke. And I would be sitting there alone like an idiot. So I would go out and stand with them. And then eventually you just be like, oh, okay, fuck it, I'll try one as well. And then you're like, oh, you know, okay. <laughs> right? Uh, I remember being surprised because my drummer smoked menthol cigarettes and I did not know that menthol cigarettes exist. And so I was surprised that a cigarette can be like cold and minty. And But I eventually converged on Dunhill Reds for some reason. That just became my, my main cigarette. Um, anyway... I smoked throughout my teen years. I smoked when I was in junior college. I smoked in the military. Um, you know, and when I started work at 23, I used to smoke at work for a while. And none of my colleagues smoked. So all my colleagues were like, you know, engineers, like kind of a... It's a different different crew, right? Like, and I think it's really, it's like a social group sort of thing. And like nobody in that social group smoked cigarettes. And so... I felt kind of bad, like I would, like they wouldn't stop me or anything, but like I would go out for a smoke break and I come back smelling of smoke and obviously like they didn't, you know, it's just subtle things, they, they didn't like make me feel unwelcome about it or whatever, but I felt awkward. So 
I would smoke at home before I left for work and then I wouldn't smoke at work until uh, maybe I would smoke at lunch or like I would wait until like the end of the day end of the work day and I would smoke at the end of the work day so I'd smoke or light up on the way to the train and uh you know I did that for a few years and then I left my job and uh yeah I've never considered myself like a heavy smoker you know I'd smoke smoke in the morning when I wake up I smoke after meals and I'd like smoke one or two here and there in between so it adds up to like eh, six seven cigarettes a day depends on depends on how 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 awake I am how much you know so it's, it's stimulants right so if you don't smoke you don't know it's, it's like micro shots of coffee sort of and um yeah you know I would just so after meals for sure um before I go to bed in the morning when I wake up which adds, so that that by itself is like five minimum and then well I don't necessarily always eat breakfast so let's but let's just say five minimum and uh yeah so even if I don't eat breakfast I drink coffee anyway so like five ish and sometimes it goes up seven or eight if I'm if I'm meeting friends who are drinking and smoking we can smoke like an entire pack at a, like, you know like, like 10 15 sticks at one go I guess like one hour like you don't really pay attention it just it just happens but for the most part I would say I'm like a six cigarettes a day smoker ish I was haven't smoked in three days uh when I was in uh, I, this is not my first attempt at quitting I've attempted like three or four times I would say like serious attempts my most successful attempt was around 2015 or so I think I managed to stop for at least at least a couple of months almost three months or something uh and I was pretty proud of that but I can't remember why I started again um I think we found the pack my wife and I found the pack and it's like <laughs> you know it's like uh and, and my wife smoke used to smoke as well and so it's like when you and your partner both smoke it's uh, hard, it's harder to synchronize stopping so now we now we're both you know we're like we're in our 30s now and we don't want to keep smoking so we synchronized and uh initially I was going to say I was going to stop immediately after my book so I, I was smoking a lot when I was working in my book because I was sleep deprived I was stressed I was tired and I was just running on coffee and cigarettes basically and that's not good but you know when you're like in crunch time it sort of helps a little bit and so yeah uh when i stopped smoking a couple of days ago i i basically napped the whole day i was like i like you know i, I didn't drink coffee the first day either so I, I crashed on the first day quite you know i had like a bit of a headache but i wasn't like agonizing over it and i suspect that a bunch of it is is psychological a bunch of it is um so I I have a whole of written pages and pages of this stuff. I used to look up, you know, the pathways, like how does nicotine work with your blood sugar and with your, because it turns out that if if you have like, if you don't eat well or if like your blood sugar levels are volatile, uh, nic cigarettes can help kind of um, self medicate your volatile blood sugar levels and make you feel less like you're having altitude sickness, which is one of the symptoms of uh low blood sugar i think uh, you you feel hypoglycemic and and cigarettes help with that and you also get hypoglycemic i believe when you're experiencing altitude sickness and so when people say i'm going out for some oxygen like with, with as a euphemism for smoking there's something to that there's a certain truth to it it's pretty interesting even though it's like they meant it as like a joke like there's something about the relief that you're seeking and uh you know so what i guess i want to talk about was that i um i wrote about coping mechanisms in my book introspect right and i reread alan carr's easy way to quit smoking which was the book that i read the last time i quit smoking for like three months or something it helped me kind of um read conceptualize renegotiate my relationship with cigarettes and so i reread alan carr's easy way while smoking to write introspect as well as i could because i felt that i wanted to talk about coping mechanisms and cigarettes were one of mine and you know i i read reread the book and while rereading the book i'm like oh yeah i don't have to be a smoker <laughs> anymore you know and so it kind of felt like writing introspect meant and you know getting my introspect tattoo 
meant that there was gonna be some point where eventually I would stop smoking. Like the 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 countdown has started, and I think it started, you know, before that. It started when I got my job, even right, and then when I left my job, like. Cigarette smoking was something that I picked up in my teen years and early 20s and it fulfilled a function for me but by the time I was in like my mid to late 20s I no longer wanted to be a smoker anymore but that's what I was at the time and I didn't you know like and once you once that's who you are that's your identity it becomes harder to reinvent yourself reconceptualize yourself and if you're going to pull that pillar, it's a, it becomes a load-bearing pillar. And with cigarettes, it's not just, you know, what you do, but it's also, you know, it's chemical. It's, and, and people, don't, people who don't smoke don't realize this. Like, you know, it's a laxative, you use it to shit, you know. And, and so when you stop smoking, you get constipated. It's like, like you can, that's one thing. And it's uncomfortable. And if you have like a job and stuff and you're stressed and you're like, I can't shit. And like, you know that a cigarette will help. Like, you know, it's, it's easy to make that that I'm not going to suffer additionally on top of like withdrawal your nose gets I mean how's my nose right now it's not that bad it's okay you know I feel my skin getting uh, it's more waxy it's less dry because I'm not blowing smoke in my eyes I guess um, but I'm sleepy and tired because the the chemical stimulant is you know I was I was stimming myself basically and it's gone so I have to come down from that and I, you know, I, I kind of know what to expect. I've I've done this sort of thing before, and so I'm not I'm not shocked or whatever. And really, I think I think the challenge, you know, is reconceptualizing your relationship with the thing. So rather than think I need to stop smoking, smoking is bad. I don't think that's a good frame. I think that's an unhelpful frame that will drive you back to it when you're stressed, when you're upset, whatever. Rather, the thing is to be like I'm in a new phase of my life, and this new version of me pursues health, wants to you know, takes deep breaths, right? <sighs> Has a lower resting heart rate. Like, like these are the, the new markers of vitality for me, right? That, that I pressure, I, I want to smell good. You know, I want to have good skin. I want to be fresh. I want to enjoy food again more than I have been for the past few years. And yeah, I just, that, I, I want to make that my new identity and I want to grow into that and, and kind of, shed the old you know i don't have to be i don't have to be mad about it i don't i don't have to be like it, you know cigarettes did serve me very well for a period of time and i think especially when i think about it in relation to adhd like and my picky eating and dietary problems like cigarettes really were pretty much close to the perfect medicine that i could have had at the time right? i do not recommend that you pick up smoking if you have adhd or whatever but I won't lie and say that it was bad for me. It, it, you know, it was uniformly bad for me. Like, it was a it was a mild evil that was keeping away worse evil for me while I was doing it. And and now I have enough executive function, enough capacity, intelligence, money, even right, like, and just to figure this shit out and and to reconstitute my life. So I mean, the big question I guess I'm gonna title this video is like, can introspect help me quit smoking? I think it, so I, you know, it would be cocky of me on day three to say yes. But, you know, the fact that I've gone this long, I think is partially a function of the fact that I've worked on the book and I've written it and I've made, gone through that transition. I want to be like a shaman figure for my for friends and other people. I want to be able to guide them through their transitions. And if I'm going to do that, I have to do my own, right? So for me... Uh, no longer being a smoker is something that is important to me so that I can guide other people on their journeys, right? So how much does that mean to me, right? More than short-term pleasure or whatever. And I don't know, we'll see. You know, three days in, I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, we'll see again a week from now. We'll see again a month from now. So maybe I'll schedule videos for all of that. Right, one week, one week of no smoking, one month of no smoking, one year of no smoking. That sounds good. Yeah, I think I'll do that. And uh, thanks for hanging out. Let me know any thoughts you have, any questions. Uh, yeah, I'm, I am, I am very sleepy, <laughs> so I don't, I doubt this was a very informative video. But I guess I just wanted to make a bit of a record, right? Like, uh, you know, part of me now wishes I had, had made a video of me smoking my last cigarette. But eh, fuck it, you know, oh, it's not a big deal. 
Do I feel like I should never ever smoke a cigarette ever ever again? Eh, maybe I'll smoke like I find myself thinking maybe I'll smoke during my military reservice, which is like two weeks a year. But mm, let's not think that far ahead. Let's just aim to go a month without cigarettes and see how that feels. Aim to go a week first. Let's do a week first. Let's see how a week feels. Done.